hey there, we're going to configure basic net, cover some basic definitions, and look at a real world example. So here in my network, I have a private network of 10.0.0.0 24. Um, our router, the client router, is connected to the ISP on 98.0.0.2 here, and dot one is the ISP. And then the ISP has a uh, connection to uh, another public address on 88.0.0.0 slash 30 and then IP knows has itself assigned dot one and the web server is dot two. Pretty basic network. So how do we configure basic net? I know I've covered this in a few different videos, I would go watch them, but we're going to go a little more uh, in depth. And again, we're going to use a real world example here of accessing a web server, what it, what it looks like. So what we'll do is we'll go to our configuration, see what it looks like. So on the client router, we obviously in our public interface, uh, we as assign it what our our uh, ISP gave us, right? And then we say IPNet outside. That's an important command, meaning what it gets translated into outside our network. Um, this is our private LAN. So this is our private IP address. And we say IPNet inside. That's an important command outside and inside on, the, uh, on their respective interfaces. Then we create an access list to define the interesting traffic that we want to translate. So if the um, our router sees traffic coming from here, from this um, private address that we've listed here, then go ahead and translate it, right? And then finally, we bind it together. So we say IP net inside source list, and then the uh, number of the access list, right? Any of these addresses in this list are allowed to be uh, translated. They're source addresses, and we're going to translate them into the IP address of the interface here, right? Fast Ethernet 00, that's our public interface going to our ISP, and we're using the overload command so we can use uh, ports as well. So instead of using one IP address per inside host, we're going to use uh, port numbers to represent specific inside you know, hosts, and it allows you to share one IP address with thousands and thousands of inside computers. You always want to use overload. Always, always, always. And then lastly, <laughs> don't forget about the routing. So most companies will have a static default route going out to the internet because there's only one way out, right? And that is our next hop. So that would be the ISP's end of the connection that we have. The ISP router, there's really nothing to it. I just assigned uh, the other side of the IP here that our ISP gave us and then one of the other public networks that it knows about with the web server on it. So nothing much to it. So I already have this configured on the uh, on the client router, but let's let's check it out real quick. And on the client router, we're going to check for NAT translations. So IP NAT translations. You can see there is nothing. There's no traffic going through currently. There aren't any mappings. But if we go to our uh, client here, our little Windows machine, and go to our web server, we'll see an entry pop in there real quick. So what we'll do is we'll open up Internet Explorer, um, everybody's favorite, and we're going to go to web server. As you can see, it loaded the web page on 88.0.0.2. Now let's see what it did on the client router. There should be at least one NAT entry. So if we do this again, you will see there's um, four groups here, inside global, inside local, outside local, outside global. And let's go ahead and cover that. You'll notice that it is an IP address and a port number, as you can see, because we use the overload command. So I copied a previous um, translation that was um, in the in the list while I was working on it. So let's break this down. What does it mean? Well, there are four different NAT address types here we've got. And let's break it down. So each uh, word here has a meaning. So the first part means the address location. What are we talking about? Inside means our host, our source. That's our 
client computer right here. And um, outside, so inside means client host computer, our source, and outside means our destination, right? Our where are we going to out internet? What is our um, outside address we're going to outside? So that is location. Inside, inside, outside, outside. Now you'll notice there are two of these grouped together. So we have two insides and two outsides. So then the second part, uh, global and local have a meaning. So global means perspective and local means perspective. So um, the first part is location of the IP address and then the second part of the word global or local means the perspective. What does it look like? Global means outside or what does it look like local inside? I know there's a bit of overlap with the terminology but just bear with me a little bit. So let's start with the beginning inside local. So the inside means our host computer. What does it look like from the local network, right? Inside network. What does it look like within our LAN here? Well, to any other computer looking with its little beady little eyes, looking down, um, it knows it as 10.0.0.50. Makes perfect sense with this source port because we have a um, we're accessing a web server, so the source is going to be a uh, high dynamic port looks like 49797 as a source port for that web browser tab there we had open okay makes sense so what does inside global mean so inside global means the inside computer here or source what does it look like from outside our network. So location and what does it look like on the outside? Global means outside. So if we're on the outside network here, little beady little eyes looking down, what does this host look like out here? Right? What does it look like out in the global internet? Well, with NAT translations, when the when the packet goes out and finally gets out here, it gets translated to 98.0.0 to port 49797, right? On the outside, which global, outside, um, that inside address here, that's what it looks like, right? Location is our computer. What does it look like on the outside of the network? This is outside, right? This is inside. All right, fair enough. Makes sense, right? Gets translated. So then what does... Um, outside local mean. And you'll notice both of these IP addresses are the same. We'll get to that. Usually they're the same. With this type of configuration it's not going to change. So outside means again destination, our um, our web server. Okay, the, the address we're trying to get to. But what does that address, this address here, location, again outside and inside mean location. This address here what does it look like perspective what does it look like from the local so my little eyes are within the local LAN here and what does it look like in this inside network the web server well on our inside network here it we're, we're going to the address 88.0.0.2 so that's what it looks like it doesn't change okay makes perfect sense so then the last one is outside global. So outside again means our the server we're trying to get to, our outside um, address, the web server here. What does it look like globally? Which means what does it look like with my beady little eyes? This is inside. This is outside. With my little eyes out on the outside, what does it look like? Let me do here. Let me do it over here. What does it look like? that outside address, what does it look like globally, which means outside. My perspective is here. Again, location, perspective. So out on the internet, any other computer is going to see the web server is 88.0.0.2. Okay, so again, local, if we go back, let me erase this. 
Our perspective of the outside web server here, local versus global, means our eyes are either looking from this perspective, local, or this perspective, little beady little eyes, um, global, or local. So I hope I kind of beat it into you the difference. Um, outside means our destination what address, the location, right? What is the address we're looking at and the different perspectives. So that's the same thing for inside global or inside local. And there's a good write-up on um, um, a blog post that I found. I'll link it down in the description that uh, talks about it. So that's pretty much it with NAT. We configured basic NAT and uh, we saw um, it accessed our, our Windows machine, we accessed our web server, and we saw uh, the translation that it entered here in the um, IP NAT little table. And that's you know, pretty much it. So as the packet goes out, just to go through the logic, we need to access the web server. It goes to the client router. The client router will see, oh, it's coming from the 10 network. Better translate it because of my access list. This is the inside interface. So what am I going to translate it to? The source address. Well, I'm going to translate my source as the packet goes out to the web server. Out here, I'm going to translate it to this on the interface, dot two. So now my source, instead of 10.0.0.50, is going to be um, 98.0.0.2 as it goes out on the internet. So then it's going to check it to the ISP. The ISP is going to get it and then knows, oh, I know where the web server is. Gets to the web server. So then the web server replies right to 98.0.0.2, goes to the ISP, ISP knows about it, goes back to the client here, and when it receives a packet, it will do NAT translations before routing. So it's going to look um, in its little NAT table and see, oh, I've got a, um, a packet coming in to 98.0.0.2 on port 49797. It says, oh, well I need to translate that to this. So as the packet goes back into our network, it's going to check it out to the destination of 50.0.10.0.0.50 on port 49797 and that'll get all the way back to this computer. So with basic net, IP net, IP net inside source, we're translating our source address. If you do IP net outside, you're kind of doing the opposite. And that's why this doesn't change. We'll get into that in, a, in another video. But I hope that was helpful, and thank you for watching.